Good evening and welcome to Monday Evening Prayer. And it's good to welcome you from a warm monastery because outside at the moment it's five below freezing and the poor hens bless them. Thankfully they're all huddled together in a nice warm coop. So it's good to welcome our dear sister Sue and sister Laurie on our live stream page. And it's good to welcome our dear brother Kaj and Danny and Ray and whoever else may join us. Welcome. So we light our light this evening and we pray especially for peace in Jerusalem, for the Abrahamic family of Jew, Muslim and Christian, that they can come together in love and forgive one another. We pray. And now we ring our bells for unity and peace wherever you are. So let us just be still for a moment maybe this is the first time today that you've had time to relax i know it is for me because we've been ever so busy putting the final touches to the crib and the various decorations around the monastery and it really is lovely to welcome the spirit of christmas so let us relax and be mindful that where two or three are gathered in his name, the Lord is present. So we begin this evening with our prologue of our brother and sister scenes of Mount Sinai. As we say together, we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. So who are these brothers and sisters of the elect? The children of God who've surrendered their heart to God. So you are part of God's elect. Monday evening, we commune with the angel of peace saying, Angel of peace, peace, peace. Angel of peace, be always, everywhere. We now reflect the crescent moon and the moonlight, invoking and visualizing universal peace in all spheres of life, but especially in your life and in the holy city of Jerusalem the birthplace of the Abrahamic faith of Jew, Muslim and Christian and the heart chakra of the world. Let us relax. <clears throat> and our opening prayer is from the book of Celtic prayers from Iona, the Western Hebrides of Bonnie, Scotland. O Christ of the least and of the homeless, O Christ of the lost and the betrayed, come close to each one of us here this night that we may come close to you. As you watched me with care at my soul's shaping, look on each one of us here now with grace. And as you blessed me with light at the sun's rising, Shine on each one of us now with your love. But there's another prayer, which is really lovely, from favorite prayers chosen by ordinary men and women from all walks of life. And this is from Keith, a life sentenced prisoner. 
and Keith wrote the prayer from which this is taken as an adaptation of one he found inscribed on the wall of his prison cell. Dear God, I hold up all my weaknesses to your strength, my failure to your faithfulness, my sinfulness to your perfection, my loneliness to your compassion, my small pain to your agony on the cross. Amen. Not a lovely prayer. Thank you, Lord, for Keith, for sharing that with us. And now, coming to our book of hymns, Sing Your Faith, from the Uni our brothers and sisters at the Unitarian Chapel in our nearby town, Kendall. And it's hymn 64. How can we confine is the theme. How can we confine God within our mind? held within a creed, humanly designed? How can we be sure that the way we know is the only path that this God might show? Surely such a joy cannot be contained by a single plan, humanly explained. People of all faiths, let us all conspire source and ground of life, answer our desire. As we long to know answers to our plight, take us, lead our quest, dancing to the light. And that's by Andrew Pratt, born in 1948, the same year as myself, so it must have been a good year. Now, coming to Psalms now, a modern version of the Old Testament Psalms by the great Reverend Leslie Brandt. And I recommend you get the family to buy it to you for Christmas. There's a copy of the book. You can get it on Amazon for a penny, a used copy. Good value. And we're reading this evening Psalm 63 on page 101. Like a thirsty child reaching for a drink, I grasp for you, O oh God, and I have found you. I have sensed your holy presence in the worship service and in the hour of prayer. I have felt you near to me. I realize now that your love for me is far better than life itself. My heart is full of joy and contentment. My mouth is filled with praises for you. Even the night hours are no longer lonely as I contemplate your tender concern for me. The enemies of my soul seek to betray me but they shall not snatch me out of your hand. And now that I have found you, I shall be secure and happy forever. Isn't that a beautiful sound? Like a thirsty child reaching for a drink, I grasped for you, O oh God, and I have found you. It makes me want to shed tears of joy for those beautiful words. But have you found the pearl of great price in your searching, in your prayer times? Have you come to a place where you know deep within your being that you have found the beloved? Wow. For those of us who have found the Beloved, we need nothing else. We don't need the fancy yachts and the Armani suits and the Gucci whatever. We have got the most precious gift, the gift of knowing that we are loved by God. And there are so many today, aren't there? 
and you see them in the cities, on the trains, on the buses and trams, and they've got faces as long as the winter months. They're so unhappy. They're all busy texting on their mobile phone. I wonder, have they never thought of ringing God on God's mobile phone? Now there's one for you. So let us now read, I'm guided to read from Rumi's little book, The Garden of the Soul, the Heart and the Spirit. And I'm calling on the Holy Spirit of God to choose a reading for each one of us. Oh, having lost you, beloved, spring brings me no joy. My thorns cover the garden, may stones rain. How profound. Cruel autumn has arrived, the rose's red dress is torn. The willow's branches have dropped, repenting for missed prayers. The lily has drawn her sword. The jasmine is shielded, ready to fight. The nightingale, jealous of the rose's admirers, suffers in silence. The trees, lifting their arms in despair, wonder why the bud buds are hidden and who has broken the violet's back. Cruel autumn has arrived, but behold, the hope of spring, for whatever autumn destroys, spring will replenish. All this talk of roses, nightingales, and gardens is only a screen I hide behind, because love is jealous. Isn't that beautiful? Well, let us come, my dear friends, and just spend a moment in the presence of the beloved. You may not have had time today to have your quiet time. I have, and I'm blessed. But maybe we reflect together. So let us switch off the mindset to all those crazy thoughts that we're no good, we're useless, that God doesn't love us. Or maybe we don't love ourselves, or maybe we're scared to look in the mirror and see what God sees. Well, now let's try and be still. Just take a deep breath and focus on breathing in the breath of God and hold that breath, and in your out breath release whatever may be troubling you, and release it to God in a mindset of gratitude, but leave it with God and relax. So in the stillness, in this moment, let us be present in the presence of God. And with each in-breath we breathe in, let us be aware of the heartbeat of Christ for us. And let us be mindful that as we sit in the comfort of our little monasteries without walls, our own home, that other children of God, our brothers and sisters, are suffering, are hurting. So we bring them into our little monasteries and we offer them love, protection, shelter and prayer. I would like you now to just visualize a knock on your door. Can you hear that knock? It is the Christ 
He has a lantern in his hand and he's calling you to come, to come, to follow him, to follow him to a place where you will not be disturbed, where there's no telephones or mobiles, a little cave next to San Damiano in Assisi. And there are two people there waiting for you, Francis and Claire. And Jesus takes you by the hand. It is dark, but his lantern is showing you the way because he is the way. He is your truth and he is the light. And as you near the cave where Francis rests, he comes to you with open arms and welcomes you with Claire. And as you sit and relax, sense the peace, sense the love, sense the joy of the Lord God who sat in front of you. But behold, you hear footsteps. Mother Earth has joined us with Mother Mary. And Mother, Mother Earth is asking you to please take off your shoes and allow her love flow up through your feet, balancing, cleansing, restoring all of your energy wheels that we refer to as chakras. And Mother Mary, the mother of the beloved sits next to you with Claire. And you feel the warmth, you feel their protection. And you know in your heart that you are loved. that you are loved and that the Lord your God who sat in front of you is asking you a personal question and the question is this do you love me do you really love me He's asking you this because so many of his children have issues with loving themselves. They see it as vanity. But Jesus is inviting you now to look into his eyes. He wants to share with you what he sees. A child of God that is whole, perfection, and complete. He guides you to look in the mirror where you live and to see what he sees and to say, I am a child of God and I am loved. I am really loved. And now, with Mother Mary, with Mother Earth, with Francis and Claire, you kneel down and they kneel down with you and the Lord lifts his hands to his Father, Mother God and he asks for a special blessing for you. Feel his hands over your head, sense his love flow through every part of you, empowering you now, reclaim your divinity as a child of God. Not a child of religion, but a child who embraces spirituality, a new way of living, 
where the heart is free to love again without guilt or fear or judgment. You sense the Lord's love for you now. Take these memories, treasure them, because they are from the Lord, your God, for you. And he has a message for you. And my heart is guided to open the little book, Jesus Calling, which has all the recorded messages from Jesus. When you approach me in stillness and in trust, you are strengthened. You need a buffer zone of silence around you in order to focus on things that are unseen. Since I am invisible, you must not let your sense dominate your thinking. The curse of this age is overstimulation of the senses, which blocks out awareness of the unseen world. The tangible world still reflects my glory to those who have eyes that see and ears that hear. Spending time alone with me is the best way to develop seeing eyes and hearing ears. The goal is to be aware of unseen things even as you live out your life in this visible world. And to this table we bring you, we bring your loved ones, we bring your special needs and requests with the children of Abraham living in Jerusalem, where many are killing one another in light of the embassy being moved from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, ignoring the needs of the Palestine people, ignoring the needs and the hurts where there is so much conflict we pray for them. We pray for our homeless brothers and sisters in these sub-zero temperatures here in the UK. And we pray for Brother Rob this evening from our community here, who's spending a night with the homeless at the Salvation Army, offering them food and shelter and a warm bed for the night. We pray for Rob. And we pray for Brother Paul our resident Buddhist monk, a follower of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and pray that he has a safe journey home from his meeting in the Midlands where they're having heavy snow. We pray for all my brothers and sisters in the Teo community, for those who may be struggling, for Sister Nancy in Mexico, we pray for Sister Mary's dear friend, Sister Maria, in hospital, and thank God the clots haven't gone to her lung. That is good news. But we pray for our friends who support our community, especially Christ's vision for the people of America in the Frank Clara Abbey of Peace and Compassion. We pray that many will unite and support our community there and support Brother Matthew, who's accepted my position as assistant abbot to oversee our beautiful brothers and sisters who are in training to become monastics, prayer partners for God, for unity and peace. But we pray for Sister Paula and her dear friend in Germany, who's terminal. We pray that Paula and Kaj are given the strength to be able to face their journey at the weekend as they fly to visit their dear friend. And for all here, I bring all your requests without reading them because the Lord knows what they are. And for all our religious leaders, 
that they come back to Assisi and unite for peace. And for those who've no one to pray for them, let us all pray for them. And now we pray especially for all light workers who are discouraged and disheartened and where they can't see a way forward because of the fog, we pray a blessing on them. And for our local farmers and for the livestock living in these Arctic conditions here in England at the moment, let us pray now the beautiful prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to all of us here at this hour our daily bread. Forgive us our stubbornness of heart, our unwillingness to listen to your inner voice. For the times we procrastinate, and for the times when we find it hard to forgive ourselves and others, and for the times when we sit in judgment on your children. Lead us not astray, O Lord, but protect us from those vitriolic forces of evil, those negative mindsets that take away your peace from us. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So be it. And our closing prayer again is from Iona in the Outer Hebrides of Scotland. And we pray the closing prayer and dedicate it for you. I end this day as the son of Mary would end it, the grace of God be on this place and on all whom God has given to me, who keeps watch over us this night, who but the Christ, our love, our beloved. The blessing of heaven, the blessing of earth, the blessing of sea and sky on those we love this night and on every human family, the gift of heaven, the gift of earth, the gift of sea and sky, the gifts of brother sun and sister moon, and the gifts of the animal kingdom be in your heart now and forevermore. Amen. And as I blow out this Advent candle, I ask the Lord Christ, to truly speak to your heart and to affirm in you that you are loved. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, paxet bonum, om shanti, solo di carita, salam alaikum, and made the peace from the son of peace from the Queen of Peace to the prayer partners of peace, you who are gathered here, may that peace flow from you to all the children of God, whether they believe or not. Amen. So be it. In five minutes from now, I hope to resume with our Advent meditation and reflection. Maybe I'll see you then. Good night and God bless. Hmm.